Hey guys, this is Calera of Wally Play Designs, and today on this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to wrap the colors in this scarf. And this particular scarf is the Alpine Holiday pattern. Um, it's exclusive to Craftsy. Uh, if you go to Craftsy.com, you'll see this pattern, and you can join the knit along. But on this video, I just want to show you guys how to manage these color changes, because in this pattern we have a series of stripes in different contrast colors that contrast our main color, which is cream on this particular colorway. So if you take a look at the edge of our scarf here, you can see it just gives a very pretty woven effect on the side. And it mirrors the same on the other side of our scarf. See, it just looks like it has kind of a woven effect on the sides. And if you look at the back of our work, our stripes all line up for each color. But there's a certain way of wrapping each of these strands of colors as you're working your scarf. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So to begin with, I'm going to show you the pattern here. And one tip that I have for you guys before you begin in basically any type of color work that involves more than two colors, like three colors or more. For this colorway, um, we're doing chalet. And what I did is we're going to be working with Rowan Pure Wool. And for this particular pattern that I'm going to be showing you, my main color is going to be this cream color. And then our contrast colors are going to be this pretty light blue and this red. So what I did in the pattern is I just wrote down following the instructions that my contrast color for this particular colorway called Chalet, uh, contrast color one is red. Contrast color two is the light blue. So if you have a set of markers or highlighters that are close to the same color that you're using in your pattern, just to serve as a guide, go ahead and write down which one is contrast color one and contrast color two and then just highlight those or underline them in that particular color. And I did this throughout the whole entire pattern. So this just serves as kind of a reminder to you so you don't have to constantly be looking back at the main part of your pattern to see which is which when choosing your colors. Okay, so we've reached the last stitch on the left-hand needle. And if we look at row 13, it says to drop our working yarn. So I've dropped it. Now with contrast color, knit the last stitch. So that's easy enough. We're just going to take our bobbin here, pull out a little length of yarn, and you're going to want to leave yourself a good sized tail. I'm leaving about probably eight inches. Okay, pick that yarn up. We're going to insert our needle and knit that last stitch with our contrast color one. Okay, now we're going to turn our work, and this is where the bobbins come in handy. And at this point, you want to make sure that you don't begin knitting with your tail. Trust me, you don't want to do that. Okay, now row 14, if we take a look here, it says to slip the first stitch purlwise with our yarn in front. Then insert needle purlwise into your next stitch. Drop your contrast color one, which is our red. Pull up the main color again and wrap over the needle front to back. Okay, this is gonna come together after I start to show you. Okay, so we're gonna slip our first stitch purlwise, which is that red, with the yarn in front. And then it says to go into the next stitch purlwise. Now this part can be a little tricky. You've got to kind of hold both needles. You're going to drop your working yarn. And now you don't want to get these two twisted. You want your contrast color coming on the right side and your main color on the left. Okay, now that we've dropped that contrast color one, it says to pull up the main color and wrap over the needle front to back. So just like so. Okay, now 
it says to pull up the contrast color one, which is our red, wrap that over the needle front to back, just like so. So we have both the main color and our contrast color. And remember, we've already gone into this first stitch purl wise. So we see that loop on our needle as well. Okay, now what you're going to do is take your main color and bring it back from back to front over the needle. And if you take a look here, you can see we've trapped or wrapped that contrast color yarn. I don't know how well you can see that. And that's just going to keep it anchored. Okay, now we can take our contrast color one yarn and complete our purl stitch with it. Okay, and the rest of the row just says to purl using your contrast color one, which is red, to the last two stitches of the row. And we're going to purl those two stitches together. Okay, so we will take our contrast color yarn and we will simply purl to the end of this row. This is row 14, so it is a wrong side row. So that's why we're purling across our work. And as you can see, our little bobbin is just dangling here harmlessly. If you start to get too close to your needle, you can just pull out loosely of your bobbin and continue on. Okay, and remember when we get to our last two stitches, pattern tells us to purl these two stitches together. So that is our row 14 completed. Now we're going to turn our work. And now if we look back to our pattern, row 15, which is a right side row, it says to slip the first stitch knitwise with your yarn in back. And then basically what we're going to be doing is our actual pattern. And if we take a look at our scarf real quick, you can see it's kind of a little boxy or zigzaggy pattern that we have in our color work. So that's what we're going to be doing on this particular row. And I will show you how to do that. Okay, so as it said, we're going to slip our first stitch knitwise. So we're going to go in like so with our yarn and back. Slip it off the needle and now if you take a look at the pattern in our little brackets here it says knit one yarn over knit one all in the same stitch. So in this stitch here going to knit and then yarn over knit and then pull those stitches off the needle. So we have a knit one yarn over knit one all in one stitch. And then the next part of our pattern says slip, knit two, pass. So we're going to slip the next stitch, knit the next two together, and pass the slip stitch over. Okay? So we increased by three stitches in this first stitch, and then we decreased back to one stitch from three. So we're going to repeat this across our row. Slip knit, pass, and remember pull out your yarn from your bobbin as you go. And then in our pattern you can see it says to do this to the last three stitches and I'll show you what we do when we reach those last three stitches. Okay so we've reached the last three stitches of our row. Now if we look at the pattern, uh, we did our repeat to the last three stitches and now we're going to knit one, yarn over knit one in the same stitch. So let's do that, knit, yarn over, knit, pull that stitch off the needle. Okay, and then drop your contrast color yarn, which is red, I'm going to go ahead and drop that. Now it says with contrast color 2, slip slip knit. So our contrast color 2 is blue, as I marked in the pattern. So we're going to grab that bobbin, leave ourselves a little tail, 
and we're going to do a slip slip knit with this blue. So slip, slip, knit. Okay, and if you take a look here, you can see these stitches are extremely loose, kind of scary looking. Um, we're just going to take our tails that are on the back of our work and pull on them to cinch up our work. There we go, that looks a little better. Okay, so we're done with row 15. Now we're gonna turn our work again. And one thing you wanna remember as you're doing this particular pattern is that we are going to be working our main color, which in this case is the cream, throughout the entire scarf. We are not gonna be cutting the cream colored yarn or the main color yarn. The only yarns that are going to be trimmed at any point is the contrast colors. So just keep that in mind as you're knitting this scarf up. Okay, so we've completed row 15. Now we're back to a wrong side row, which is row 16. First thing we need to do is slip the first stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Now remember we are working in blue now. We've just incorporated that color. And this is why these little bobbins come in handy. Again, we're not going to get too twisted here. It can be a little fiddly at first. Okay, so we want to make sure we're not knitting with that little tail. And I like to kind of cinch it up all of our tails, make sure the stitches stay nice and tight. Okay, so row 16 says to slip the first stitch purl wise with yarn in front. We're going to do that. Okay. Then insert needle purl wise into the next stitch and drop your contrast color to yarn, which is blue. So we're going to, just as we did on our last color change, insert the needle purl wise into the next stitch, drop our yarn. Remember we want it on the right side here. And after that, pull up the main color, wrap over the needle front to back. So again, front to back. Okay, and then pull up the contrast color two yarn and wrap over needle front to back. Contrast color two was the blue. Front to back. Okay. And then take your main color which is the cream, pull it back over the needle, back to front. And just as we did on the last color change, you can see we're anchoring that contrast color, the blue one, with our main color. Now we can finish purling our stitch with our contrast color too, and pull that off the needle. Okay, so if we take a look here, we've got two stitches on our needle in our contrast color too. And this row says to simply purl to the end of the row in this contrast color too. Okay, so we're just going to purl to the end of the row. Okay, so we've reached the last two stitches of our row. We're going to purl those together. And that is our wrong side row complete, row 16. So this is what the front of our work should look like. Now we're going to be starting row 17 in the pattern. It says still working with your contrast color too, which is blue. Slip the first stitch knitwise with yarn and back. So again, this is just a repeat of our last right side row after a color change. You just slip the first stitch. And then remember our repeat, knit one yarn over knit one in the same stitch. We get into frame here. And then our decrease, slip, knit two together, and pass over. Okay, so we're going to work this to the last three stitches of the row, just as we did before. 
And I want to just point out a little tip here as you're working this particular stitch pattern. If you lose your place, just kind of look back on your needles and see I made an increase in this stitch, so now I want to do a decrease. And again, if you lose your place, you just did a decrease, so you want to do an increase next. And if you take a look at our stitches here, let me get it over the white paper so you can see better. If you look at the red, you can see our knit stitch, our yarn over in the middle, and then our next knit stitch. So we know that this is the right placement, this middle yarn over, to put our next increase, our knit yarn over knit. So that might help you as you're going along in the pattern to kind of keep track of where you're at. Okay, so we've reached the last three stitches. Just as row 17 says, to work our stitch pattern to the last three stitches, and then we'll do that knit one, yarn over, knit one in the same stitch. Knit, yarn over, knit. Now the pattern says to drop contrast color two, which in this case is blue. And remember that should be on the right side of our work. Okay. And then it says with main color, slip, slip, knit. So we're simply going to pick up our main color, slip, slip, knit. So now we have our main color again. And we are done with row 17. Now we're going to turn our work. This is what our stitches should look like at this point on the back. But again, you're just going to want to take the time to stop and look at your tails that you have hanging here. Make sure that you're not picking these up and working with them. Okay. Now we're ready to move on to row 18 in our pattern. Okay, now we're ready to move on to row 18 and remember even rows are wrong side rows. The first thing it says to do is slip this first stitch purlwise with yarn in front. So we're going to grab our working yarn which is our white. Get these little tails out of the way. So we have our white. We're going to slip that stitch purlwise with yarn in front. And then, just as we've done previous color changes, insert your needle purlwise through the next stitch, drop your main color. Now we're going to pull up our contrast color 2 yarn. And I underline that as blue. So here's blue. We're going to wrap that over the needle front to back, just as we did before. Now we're going to pull up the main color wrap that over front to back and then lastly we'll take that contrast color too and pull it back around. So again we've trapped the yarn that we're working with and now we can complete our purl stitch with our main color. Pull that through the stitch on your left hand needle and then as the pattern indicates, we're just going to purl across this row using our main color. And we will purl the last two stitches together, just as we did before. Okay, so these are our last two stitches on our needle. I'm going to purl those together. And now we are done with row 18. And again, you just want to take a moment to stop and untangle your little bobbins. Turn our work. And as you can see, our little stitch pattern is starting to form. And we've gone from red to blue. And now we're on our main color, our white. And we're basically going to be continuing. This is actually a 10 row repeat in our contrast colors. And I will show in the actual pattern for the Alpine Holiday scarf all 10 rows and what you need to do. 
Um, as I said, marking your contrast color one and two in the particular colors that you happen to be working with in your pattern is really gonna help you as you go along. But you can basically get a general idea of how we twist these yarns on the back of our work. And if you take a look here, you can see what we've done. As I showed you in that first scarf, we're just trapping each color change as we go up. And again, in this particular pattern, uh, you do not want to cut or trim your main color yarn. You're just going to be cutting these when you're done with them after each color section. And I'll show you that on this main scarf. You can see how we have, as I said, 10 rows in this color section and then another 10 rows in our main color. And that goes up all the way up the entire length of your scarf. So you're never going to trim your main color. Okay, and there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Now that I've shown you how to wrap your colors and you're working your pattern, I want to show you really quick a way to keep track of your actual rows. Sometimes it can be really confusing when you're working a, an actual stitch pattern like this one where it kind of you kind of get lost in where your actual rows are. Uh, if you want to keep track in your pattern, you've kind of lost your way. If you take a look here, you can see our little loops or V's in our blue. This would be our first row of our color work. And then just above that is another loop. That's our second row. And then the next color change, gray, that's our third row. The gray above it is our fourth. And then you just go all the way up five six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that's how you, you can keep track of how many rows that you've knit. And you might find that useful when you're knitting this particular scarf pattern. So that is how we manage our yarn colors when we're working in stripes or color work. So I hope this helps you guys.